Hello everybody, my name is Ian Ellis. I'm here to give another video on for Great Artist Steel. What we're looking at now is Edward Hopper's light and, and just looking at his paintings. Um, in comparison, to start with, we're looking at the painting we just looked at, which is Vincent van Gogh's, and you can see there's a big difference between the two. Both are realistic. <clears throat> Vincent van Gogh's paintings don't have any shadows, if you look, it's really strange. It's, you, even in an overcast day, you'd expect to see some kind of darker shadows underneath these paintings. So, um, and with, with Hopper, you can see there's lots of study of light, actual light. So there's a kind of naturalism that you look, and this doesn't look so natural. So I would call this kind of symbolic realism, where the colors have a power, of, of an object has a power, has its own meaning. So you're still selling a story, I suppose, um, but two different ways. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> uh, Hopper's painting, you can see it's a certain time of day. You've got um, it's almost twilight. It's a very favorite time for a lot of artists. There's a kind of blue light in the sky and there's a kind of uh, reflected shadows down here within that. Um, just looking at impressionist light, um, what I'm gonna do is just trying to show you, I'll really write this down for you, whether we have um, the idea of impressionist light You've got the local killer. Which is the killer of an object, uh, which you're seeing in this. I suppose <clears throat> if you look at a killer of an object, in, 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 if you intensify the killer, you'll get something like this. So I suppose a killer of an object will be a killer you will see during day, everyday light. So when it's overcast and you don't see any strong sunlight and you see the killer of an object. I suppose Van Gogh's paintings, what it's done is actually intensified those colors almost like it's, it's um, a gray day and it's intensified the colors. So you see the colors of an object rather than actually how it's been affected by light. Not to say there's not warm or cool in that. You just don't know where the direction of light's coming from. So local killer is more the color we know in our mind. Um, we would describe as something um, with, with the local killer. So for instance, my top is green um, and it can be affected by light. So if, what you get there, you get a different kind of light. So in, in this painting um, by Edward Hopper called Gas, painted in 1940, you can, the main light source is actually coming from inside the house. So it looks a bit more yellow light coming out, breaking the, creating, the, creating these shadows here. But there seems to be another light source where they, there's a, another light source coming from the moon, which complicates things. But if you're looking at most uh, Impressionist paintings, you would say there's a primary light. It would say maybe the primary light source And then you get the secondary light will be the blue sky. So you get the secondary light. Is the in this case it's the it's the light bulb, artificial light, which is warm. And then you get the secondary light, <coughs> which is the sky, the sky color, which is a blue, which is cool. What's interesting about Hopper is he tends to go for complementary killers as well. So you have a yellow light and the complementary will be a blue light, um, a kind of purple blue. Um, so what will happen is that the, the, if you've got a color of an object, you've got a color object, say the floor being more of a kind of sandy color. If you, if you compare it to the, to the road here, you will see this more of a gray tarmac. So this path, this, this here has a kind of the, the local killer we can't really see because it's been affected by the um, the color of the uh, blue light coming from it, which you can see there's a sand of a sandy brown color, so it's kind of a gray color, a gray brown. So it, the actual local color would sort of kind of gray brown. Um, you might see just a little bit of it poking through. Then there's quite a lot of blue light coming down, reflecting off that, destroying that. So this is this is the cool light mixing it. So you'd have the local color mix plus with the secondary light, which is more of a blue, creating all these cool colors. You mix those two together and you get these colors. The lit side, it's really dominate, dominated by the, almost like a very light yellow orange, and loads of white, which is a warm color, which destroys the color of the tarmac and you almost get reflected light of the actual light itself because it's so strong. Uh, look at other paintings by Edward Hopper. You will see this is a different time of light, following the same principles. You've got the so called impressionist light theories, the strong yellow light being the almost white light coming from the sun, casting these shadows, 
and the shadows are actually reflecting the skylight in there, so they look much stronger. And you can see this a little bit on the shaded part of the uh, building here. Um, the fence being white is also in the shade, and one side of it or in the, in the shade, and that's picking up the blue sky as well, so it's kind of picking up. Now if you look at the yellow of the, uh, of the actual <coughs> grass with the sunlight shining on it, you've got this kind of bright yellow light changing the colour of the grass being, say, something like this. But not, quite as, not quite as bright as this, but turning it into a kind of yellow colour. Then the other side of it in the shaded area, you've got the blue light hitting the green, making that colour. So if I was doing a bit of mixing, if I was going to do that same thing, say if I was mixing, say I've got a strong light hitting my jumper, um, I'd have this, say the colour of my jumper would be that colour. The light source hitting it, the primary light source hitting it is this colour. Maybe yellow with lots of white. And the secondary light colour being more of a blue. Okay, a cobalt blue maybe. So <clears throat> that's a local colour being this colour. Then it will be affected. You mix that colour with that colour. You, how it's affected, lots of white. More yellow. Lots of yellow if it's dominant in that painting. You can see the painting is very dominant with a green yellow. That's one side of it. And then that's a local colour you're not seeing because it's been affected by the light sources. And against that, the other side of it, you'll get the blue mixed with the green. And you put these next to each other. You get this lovely contrast of light hitting it. And so the actual emerald green is still in both of them, but only a little bit, and it's been affected. So you see this a lot in, in Hopper's work, and you see this in, in the Nighthawks as well. You can see there's a strong yellow light shining inside. There's a kind of blue light again outside. Again, that works with the idea of a complementary uh, contrast. And I'll just go back to that we did with Vincent van Gogh's contrast. We've looked at this again and look at the Maxwell's triangle. Remember, Vincent van Gogh was in Paris at the time, he, um, not long after van Gogh was there. And he was taught at the Beaux Arts. So he'd have actually been aware of all these theories. So if you look at this, Again, if you look at his paintings, you've got this kind of blue and yellow uh, dominating his paintings. So you get the complementary, warm and cool, a uh, lot of value, a lot of light and dark. Um, and the ideas, impressionist theories of light, really dominate in his paintings. We go back to the initial gas painting. You can see that it's, for us that will be a white building, but you can see there's no white on it. It's reflecting the green blue in one side of it, and it's going, it's going much more of a yellow color, green of the light shining on that. Could be, could be, it could be a light, very light gray green building, maybe. I don't know, but it's hard to tell. But I think it, uh, if you look at a white building, that's how it would reflect light around that. The guy's shirt, probably white, reflecting the same colors. So you get this, uh, you've got the actual realism of light hitting something. But when the painting, you can still look at the painting as contrasts of uh, eye coming back to, to us, how they all affect each other. Uh, but creates this kind of eerie light that you see in a Hopper painting that helps him create this beautiful narratives. And they're really interesting from a point of view of the narrative. And obviously, they're also very interesting from a point of view of composition. But with linear perspective and design makes a massive part in his painting. But we're just looking at his light, and its light is really powerful. Gives a kind of yellowy kind of light in his paintings that give it a kind of eerie light compared to say someone with more natural feel for colour. I would say with someone like Monet. It doesn't make his paintings any less. In fact, it makes him more interesting because he's putting down a colour what he thinks light should be for his paintings. So they look a little bit odd because there's a light that's slightly more yellow in my view. Um, but that's why I like them so much because there's like a different, you're looking at a different um, world. It's, uh, so that you, and the, the light plays its part. Anyway, uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, the, the, the next video, I'll be looking at the mixing of colours of, for, uh, Van, uh, for uh, not, Van, not Vincent, but Edward Hopper's paintings. And we'll be looking at how he, he, how he got these colours, or the range of these colours in gas. So please tune in to that, and, and don't forget to subscribe. So thanks very much, everybody. Bye.